Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my Game of Thrones Legends mobile game content. So today I want to talk about a topic that is going to continue on in the Pro Tip series. This is going to be Pro Tip number 15. This is going to be a little deal about what to do when you're stuck. Because in these kind of games, this is something that's going to happen, unfortunately. And it seems like this one is susceptible to this very, very bad. Because they're very stingy with their summon tokens. And their drop rates on the hero summons are very, very low. So when you do get some tokens, you most of the time do not get the hero you're trying to get. So it gets hard to advance. And I guess the best way to do this is to just kind of look at our power. Um, well, let me think here. What's the best way to do this? So <clears throat> when you're thinking about advancing... You're either looking at it as your power number, because let's say that your house has instituted a minimum power requirement, and you have to stay above that as a show of your strength to be able to stay in the house. That's understandable. Lots of houses do this because they want to ensure that their members are constantly moving forward and that they are strong enough to handle top-tier content. So a lot of times, uh, houses will say, hey, we're going to institute a 300K power requirement if you're not above 300K by X date or whatever, you know, uh, we're going to have to remove you or move you to a sister house or, you know, whatever. So you're looking at it as your power rating or you're looking at it in a way as, you know, how do I keep advancing my levels and my stars on my heroes because in this game the way they have everything level locked and level gated by stars your stars are what matters as far as hero advancement because without more stars you don't get the ability to have more levels so right now you can see i have four three stars in my party and that gives me a maximum of a level 150 on each one of them. Now, I've already got them maxed at 150. And then Daener my Daenerys is a two-star, so she has a maximum of 100 levels. So you get 50 per star. So a one-star character would get 50 levels, for instance. But my party that I have right now is pretty much max as far as levels go so there's really nothing i can do with my party <clears throat> other than raise their star level and to do that you have to go into the summons and you know use your summon tokens and hope and pray that you get the hero that you want because when you finally do get the hero shards that you're looking for hopefully you get enough to where, like my Tyrion, if you'll look in the lower right-hand corner, I'm 13 out of 70. So that means that I need, what, math here, 57 more shards on him to be able to take him up to star level 4, which would give me an additional 50 levels and allow me to go up to level 200 with him. So that's, you know, what you're looking at when you're talking about raising your power of your heroes and raising the power of your team. The overall power is the power that your team together has, and the individual power that you can see listed on each hero portrait is the individual power of the hero. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. We all get that at this stage, you know, we're... We're getting to the point that most of the people that frequent this channel are, are starting to really, you know, learn the game and get up there. And, and we're starting to consider ourselves, you know, pretty knowledgeable about the game by now. So when you get to this point that you're locked and you're just kind of stuck, what do you do? So I wish I had a secret tip. I wish I had a secret trick 
to tell you, oh, do this and you'll grow in power exponentially overnight, you know, while you sleep. Five billion power. But unfortunately, I do not have anything like that because this game has everything so locked down that unless you spend a ton of money or you just get it in your mind that this game is for the long haul, if you're going to play free to play or close to free to play, somebody that just like buys the gold road pass every month and that's about it type of thing uh, because that's such an outstanding deal that you just can't hardly pass it up for the cost. But if you're not going to spend a bunch of money, then you're just going to have to come to grips with the fact that your power is not going to grow fast. You're going to have to do things daily to incrementally increase your power each day. And that's how you grow. Because until you get the tokens to actually unlock more star levels on your heroes, you just can't make huge increases in power. Now, one of the things that is, well, just about the only thing, really, that you can really do at this point to grow your power once you're stuck is to be efficient. So that's the key in all these types of games is efficiency. You have to be efficient. You have to do the things that are going to help you grow your power, and you have to do them well. So one of the few things that you have available to you to help you grow your power is gear. So if you look at your players and you go to the ones that you're working on that are in your party, you can see that I've been consistently working on my gear. I've got three out of the five pieces at max level, and I have my fourth piece that I'm working on now very close to 50 max level as well because I've been taking it up. You can see I've got it at level 43. Let's put an upgrade on it right now and see how far we can get. Okay, so that's as far as I can take it right now. But that's going to take it almost to level 44. So that is one way that you can increase your power daily. But to do that, you're going to need the resources that it costs to do that with. So when you do an upgrade, you need common equipment to upgrade with. I wouldn't suggest using your epics because that's just going to cost a ton of food and you may end up getting yourself in a bad way by doing that because you may have needed those epics for a new character that you unlock in a, in a random really good pull or something like that you know and now you needed those epics and you don't have them so i would just suggest burning all your common gear because you're going to get a ton of it if you farm campaigns at all and you can see looking through my list that i have hundreds and hundreds of pieces of common gear so i mean i've got Tons of stuff that I can use to upgrade my gear with. And I don't ever have to even think about using epics. And I'm going to continually get more because I'm farming the campaigns daily to get rid of my energy. So using the things that you have to level your gear on the team that you're trying to raise the power of. You then need to have the, res the other resource that you need to do that with and that's food. So obviously, the next thing you really need to be efficient about is your food production. Because if you're not producing food, then that means that you're going to have to rely on just the food you get from the campaign rewards and the PvP rewards, which will be in addition to your normal daily production quite a bit. But you have to be efficient about your production. So right now you can see that I am trying to get my fortress requirements ready to go to level 18. And to go to level 18, I have to have my food storage level up to 17. And that's what I'm working on right now. I have that going. I'm going from 15 to 16 right now, and then next will be 16 to 17, and then I will be able to set my next fortress upgrade to level 18. So I'm continually striving to increase my food production. 
My food production for me is key because, like you saw on my roster, well, this is a better way to show it. On my roster, I'm capped. I can't really do anything until I get more stars. So right now, my only option to grow my power is to level my gear. And that's basically just a few thousand points of power per day based on the amount of food that I produce each day. But that's the only option that's available to me at this point, other than just being efficient and trying to squeeze every last drop out of every bit of production that I can get. So keeping up with your farmers is key because they're going to be producing your food that you're going to use and upgrading your gear because you will get to the point that your heroes are locked and you can't, produce, you can't progress any farther with their levels. You just will. That's just how this game is designed. They're too stingy with summon tokens and they're too stingy with the rewards. So they do not allow you to have an overabundance of things that you can do and level. I mean, yes, I could be leveling my commons and I could be leveling my other epics and all that kind of stuff. But to me, that's a waste because leveling up other characters that are not in your current active party does not raise your power. It just makes those heroes stronger in case you want to use them in the future. Me personally, I think it's smarter to just use those resources towards the active party that I'm trying to build so that I can raise their power, raise the power of their gear. That way I'm raising my overall power and getting stronger in the eyes of myself and the people that are watching my power level. So you can see that my farmers are 17, 16, 16, 16, 16. That's because I have been hardcore on keeping my farmers up. I want to keep my farmers up to match the level of my food storage and the requirements for my next tier of fortress. I want to keep that going as much as possible. I also focus on iron production a lot as well because iron is a key resource in the upgrading of buildings and stuff and resource uh, people like farmers and miners as well. So that's important too. Silver I've kind of lagged behind on. Because I just really don't need silver right now. Because my heroes are level gated. I can't spend the silver to upgrade them. Because I'm using every scrap of food I have to upgrade gear. So I'm basically just letting the silver stack at this point. Because I really just don't have anything to do with it at this point. It's kind of a bad design, honestly. But until I unlock another star and have the ability to raise a level or until I decide to use a different character in a different party build, I won't really have a use for my silver. So focusing on my food, number one, focusing on my iron production, number two, keeping my requirements up so that I can focus on building my fortress, you know, also. And that's being efficient so that you can level your gear as fast as possible. Because like I said, you'll eventually get to the point that your hero level, your star levels are locked and you can't go no farther. Gear is going to basically be the only other thing you have to raise the power of your party and raise the power of your main team that you like to use. Level their gear. Now, another thing that you need to be constantly working on is being efficient with your token generation. You need to get the rewards from campaign because now the rewards from the campaign are a lot better and they're giving you way more summon tokens for clearing chapters and that kind of thing used to we didn't get hardly anything but as of this last update they've increased the rewards on the summon tokens for beating chapters in this campaign so you need to be keeping up with that and you can need to continually keep pushing the campaign as far as you can so that you can continually get those rewards so be focusing on that be focusing on your red god's altar every day when this comes due tap it get the resources that you need and possibly the uh, melisandre tokens so that you can level her but the resources you keep that resources generating and coming in pay attention to your daily goals 
because now on the completion of your daily goals, you get a purple token and a red token every day when you complete those. Those are easy to do. Start an upgrade on one building. A building or a worker counts as an upgrade on a building. Play one battle. Activate 20 power-ups. These are all things that you can do in your first 30 minutes of grinding in the morning when you first start playing your account. So this is not rocket science on that. This is stuff that you can keep up with daily so that you keep that summon token generation going so that whenever the heroes that you're trying to get show up, like let's say I was trying to go for Tyrion, I've got 67 tokens ready. I'm consistently saving them. Whenever I feel like it's time to pull the trigger, I'll do my most economical summon, the summon times 10, which is the best value, and burn 9 tokens per attempt and hopefully get more of his shards. So, that is your only other real option in the game to increase your power, and that's be efficient, use your resources towards leveling your gear, and be efficient in the manner that you gather your summon tokens as much as you possibly can so that you can do the summons to hopefully get more stars to unlock more levels to raise your power. Other than spending a ton of money, those are your only real options to get you over the hump on being stuck in this game. That's just, it is what it is. It's how it's designed. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to level up your characters. I'm just not going to do it because I am not going to watch people waste their money and then turn around and watch them destroy characters like they did with Allison the other day. So I have made up my mind that I'm not going to suggest anyone spend money on this game. And that's just the stance I'm going to take because I've seen ignorant decisions made already and it's just not fair to the player base to encourage them to do that. So if you want to spend money, you spend money. That's a personal choice. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to do it. If you want to play free to play, then you're going to have to be efficient in the manners that we just talked about. And those are the only ways that you're going to get over that hump of being stuck in how to increase your power. So, I know this one went a little longer than I normally would have. I do appreciate you being here watching my content. And be sure to check my description uh, for a link in the description to my open Discord where we talk about the game and we have uh, lots of interactions and fun stuff going on there. We have... Our houses that are part of the Three-Eyed Ravens banner are all gathered there in the Discord. We have the Three-Eyed Ravens, the Savage Garden, and Valar Gulus as part of our houses right now. So I would look forward to seeing you join. And that's the best way to get an invite to our houses, I'm just going to say. Right now we're all full. But when we do have openings, we do announce those openings in the Discord. So go in there, use the link in the description, join the Discord, chat with us, get to know us, because we pick from the people that actually interact with us. And hopefully we'll see you in the house soon. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching my content. Have a good weekend.